Okay, hello. Um, we are going to do this little test it out sheet together. Um, this might not be the kit you have, but the same thing will work regardless of which one you have. Um, so what I'm gonna have you do first is activate your paint. So go ahead and just put a drop of water on each of these little paint piles you have. And this just kind of wakes them up a little bit. Just let them kind of sit there. And then you're going to just make a little test swatch of each one to see how they dry and what color they look like on the actual paper. Rinse your brush between each one. And you'll notice the more paint you have, the less water, the richer and darker the color is. And you'll also see that the longer that the water is in here, kind of activating the paint, the richer the color is gonna be. Okay, so just try and see what all your colors look like. You'll also notice if you kind of end up putting a swatch right next to each other and they touch here, they're gonna bleed together. And that's, you know, fine, not a problem for this. This is just a learning kind of experience. But if you don't want colors to bleed together, that's something really good to know. Your paint is only gonna move where there is water or where you've already applied water to the page. So since this has a bunch of water in it still, this color coming right next to it is just gonna bleed straight into it. So sometimes you really want this effect to happen and sometimes you don't. So like I would really not love the red of this roof right here to bleed into the sky because if it bleeds into the sky, that blue and reddish orange color will just make mud. It'll just turn into brown. Um, so that would be sad. Sometimes you want the colors to bleed together like when you're doing greenery or foliage and you want, or like a flower or something, and you want the colors to kind of bleed together, sometimes you really want that soft effect. So I'll show you how to get both of those things, um, hard edges and soft edges. Okay, so just really quick, the more layers of a color you paint, the darker it will get. The idea is to slowly build up the darks. So like when you're doing greenery, for example, in here, I would be painting this light color right here everywhere first, and then I'm painting another layer. If I go and paint another layer of the same color right on top of it, this is called glazing, and that will make it just a darker version of the same color. So that's a really great way to create um, shape and form. Number two, always be sure to look around for the lightest spots before you start a painting. It's important to leave these spots untouched. You can always paint into them later, but you can never recover the white page once it's been painted on. So there are ways to lift the paint from the paper once you've painted on it. Even if you painted on it a long time ago, you can still lift it up. Um, and I will show you how to do that down here. Um, but it will never be fully white from the page. So remember that. Three, be sure to let each layer dry before you add more paint in spots that touch or they'll end up bleeding together, which is what I just showed you right there. So, um, uh, another thing you might want to have nearby or handy is a paper towel. Those are going to be really helpful while you're painting. So if you don't have one of those, go grab that now. I have this one right here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is wet on dry. So wet on dry just means that it is wet media. So this water, watercolor on dry paper. So this is pretty much what you're used to painting. That's what we just did right here. This is wet on dry but um, I'm gonna have you take it to the next level. So let's do this burnt sienna, for example. We're gonna get some of that paint up here. And you really kind of get a darker, deeper version. So more, more paint, less water. Watercolor is traditionally 75% water, 25% paint, if that helps. So, now I'm gonna get just a little bit of water. 
and add some of the paint to it. So this is a lighter version. So I'm gonna bring that down so it's just lighter. I'm just creating a gradient here. And then I'm just gonna use water. So this is a great way to create a gradient. Where it dries, it's gonna have smooth lines and it's gonna bleed down. So this is a great way to create like a sky, for example, water, things like that, where you want it to be pretty smooth, but light. So a sky will be bluer, darker at the top of the sky. And as you come down toward the earth, it gets lighter. So this is a great way to create that effect. Now wet on wet, cover the square with clean water. So I'm just using clean, fresh water here. And I'm gonna create a little shape just so you see how this works. So now I'm gonna go in with maybe ultramarine blue. Just in here, doesn't matter what colors you use. So if you notice the colors are blooming into there, it's gonna keep bleeding. And it'll only go where you put the water, so that edge will remain. So I'm gonna put some other color, maybe put some yellow down here and let this bleed together. So again, this is a great way to create those soft edges where they kind of bleed together. It's fun, you can just keep going if you want. If you add, I mean, blue and yellow together is gonna to create kind of a muddy color. It's not great because this is kind of a close to an orange color. Blue and yellow or orange are opposite on the color wheel. So that means that they are they look great together, they make each other look better, but when you mix them together, they just create a brown. Okay, so wet on wet is a perfect way to do a sky or water where you're gonna add more colors in. You might wanna deepen a color later, so like, oh, I need it to be even more blue here, so you wanna add more blue in. It'll stay blue there, but it's gonna spread, but it'll still stay a little bit darker in that area. Okay, so now we're gonna do dry on wet. So first you're gonna fill the whole square with a solid color. So whatever color you want here, maybe we'll do some red. So filling this square with red. And then what I'm gonna do is add other colors in here. So, <clears throat> And this is dry, not dry, dry, but you have to get your paint activated. So once it's activated, I'm getting over here on this side that's kind of drier, but it's a lot of color, a lot of pigment. And I'm just gonna start putting these little lines in here so you see how this works. So you'll see that it moves, but it doesn't bloom quite as much as it is up here. So we're here when we drop the paint in, it just But this time I'm putting in paint that isn't super wet. So this is more like 95% paint, 5% water. And I'm putting in here and I'm, you can still see those details are going to remain. They're gonna have soft edges. They're not gonna be hard edges, but they will remain. And when I say soft edges, the difference is this is a hard edge right here. This edge right there is hard. These edges are soft, they're more blurry. Okay, so now lifting. This is also great for like flower petals or leaves where you wanna put like the veins or something like that in. This is a great way to do that. Um, okay, so lifting, lay down paint in the square. So maybe I'll try some yellow ochre this time. Maybe I'll shape it kind of like a little yellow flower poppy. Okay, so I have my paint down. Now what I'm gonna do is rinse my brush off, dry it, and then pull a line through. Do you see how the paint lifts off here and creates a highlight? It's still gonna be soft, but it's a highlight. And another thing you can do, just show you this, is go in with a crumpled up paper towel and stamp spots out. 
So, and if you kind of do it a little bit more crumpled together like this, you can create shapes that are more irregular and that's really fun for clouds um, and a lot of other things. It's like just to create some texture. Um, so you can also use sponges. There's all kinds of fun little tools you can use, but there's a great start. So hopefully now you feel ready to paint on your actual painting. Um, anything else I need to tell you? Oh, this is great for mixing on. You can just mix right on top of this uh, sheet. So when you get started on your painting, go ahead and just mix right on there. Uh, yeah, okay. I hope you have fun. Enjoy the process.